Welcome everyone and thank you for coming and seeing this talk. I am Dario and I have Jim and Caleb with me here. Uh, we are all from the virtualization team and we are going to try to talk a little bit about virtualization stack deployment scenarios. Let's see what it means. So I am going to cover the first part which will be about QEM. And uh, the, uh, let's jump directly into it, uh, into problems and one problem, maybe the biggest one, uh, with QEMU is that uh, there are a lot of packages related to it. This one here is a probably non-comprehensive list of the actual sub-packages of the QEMU package itself, but then there are dependencies, and uh, yeah, uh, it's, it tends to be difficult to handle. What, we, uh, what I want to uh, address is not only the fact that there are a lot of sub-packages, but uh, as in the title, that there are a few different deployment scenarios. Some uh, uh, that always been there, some that are, yeah, let's say fairly new. So the, these, are, these, are, these are them, and uh, the first one is uh, the one that I'm going to call the traditional one. Uh, I don't know how, how traditional it, it is really, but it's basically what we've been doing and recommending to customers to do in Sli for at least since when I joined. Uh, which is, uh, yes, there are a lot of packages, can you please install all of them so we are sure that everything works? And it works, indeed. Uh, that said, uh, it's possible that even, I mean, customers that, that are now and will be on Sli and uh, uh, may want, for whatever reason, to be able to not have to always install everything. Especially, I don't know, if you are on a server which has no GUI and you don't want uh, to bring to, to, to install packages that uh, even as a dependency bring in uh, GTK or GUI, or GUI stuff. So this is, it's not like this, this uh, uh, concern and this problem doesn't exist. But it's, yeah, um, we probably just, at least for now, kind of neglected it. Uh, however, now with uh, micro essentially micro already and yeah, and with, Al with Alp again, uh, this is being, this is becoming more and more important and uh, uh, something that surfaced when, uh, uh, again, micro essentially micro came out was that, uh, yeah, this whole thing of uh, please install everything, uh, maybe, maybe it's still fine, but as long as it works even with no recommends, which it doesn't. <laughs> or it wasn't, at least, and now it, yeah, still doesn't, but we are working on it. And, uh, yeah, and of course, uh, that also depends on the architecture, because at least the, uh, yeah, at least QM, you, 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 want, uh, you want it, uh, it has some architecture-specific components. So right now, the way we are dealing with this bunch of packages is these two patterns. At least these are the ones that, one that we maintain, KVM Server and KVM Tools. And uh, uh, attempts of mm, handling the situation better have been made both at the patterns level, but also at the meta package level, which, we'll, which I will explain in a, a minute what, uh, what I mean with it. So this is what I meant with, uh, <laughs> there are a lot of packages either directly or by, or uh, yeah, uh, by, uh, because of dependencies. So I'm afraid you cannot read this very well, but actually I'm not afraid because that was the point, that uh, there's a lot of stuff here. And, uh, and this is uh, an effective visual representation of it, I think. Which, and this is basically what happens if you do what we have in our guide, what we recommend to users and customers to, to do, install everything. Uh, as I said, we have the patterns, and this is the KV, I should have written it somewhere probably, this is the KVM server one that you have seen in the previous slide, in the two, slides, two, two slides back, which, as you can see, uh, it doesn't look too bad, but uh, yeah, it's, also, it's, it's actually responsible for some of these, despite looking innocent. Uh, and yeah, there are a couple of interesting things uh, in both good and bad ways. So for example, we have these, some, some, some packages that are required in the pattern, some packages which are recommended, uh, which I don't know, I'm not sure if, uh, I'm not sure it's the best way of doing it, especially 
now that we know, as I said at the beginning, that uh, things have to work, uh, preferably everything, not only on uh, uh, Zmicro and, uh, and uh, Micro S and Alp, uh, even with no recommends. So th the problem with that is that uh, if we uh, really use no recommend and install this pattern, then we get only these things and only the required dependencies of these things. And this tends to be a, a little bit too, too, too small, too few. So we say that we would like users and customers to use the vert, for example, for, uh, as, a, as, as the gate to, to, to virtualization in, in our product, as the interface. But uh, if you do that, if you just use requires, you don't even get libvirt. Uh, so, yeah. On the other end, if you turn on recommend, yeah, you do get libvirt and a few, of other, and a few other stuff. You get, for example, virt install, which is instead typically a client tool, uh, a, 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 or really a tool that uh, whoever is using uh, the product and wants to, to, to use virtual machine uses to uh, deploy and install virtual machines. So why is it in the server pattern? So, uh, well, uh, of course, I mean, the, I, I understand that the feeling could be, why are you saying this instead of changing that, which is exactly what we are about to do and what I'm talking about. Uh, although, I mean, there are multiple ways of, of doing that and we are wondering which one is the best and, and this, is the, this is the point of the talk. So, yeah, uh, either too much or too few. Changes are uh, possible, of course, and are necessary, I would say, but how to do that and what to change is, uh, at least for us, not always trivial. So, for example, uh, yes, there are already uh, open bugs about the situation that I showed before in the previous screenshot, let's say, and we are working on them. So even before getting to the patterns, uh, there are things that we can do for, uh, yeah, making uh, the, uh, I mean, the package, the, the various QEMO sub packages, uh, uh, trying to bring in less dependencies to, for making them smaller, uh, splitting them better and stuff like that, like for example, putting docs in, a, uh, in, in, in a, its own package. Are we then going to require recommended package? Well, let's see. Um, handling dependency better, like uh, for example, this is about only installing the packages that uh, as a dependency bring in uh, uh, yeah. For example, libgtk, it's the, exa it's the example I'm making multiple times because, it, because it's there, it's actually there, but in general, GUI stuff, they risk, you risk uh, having an entire, an entire desktop environment or sort of being brought in as a dependency uh, right now, basically. Unless we can handle this better and, for example, use, uh, being, using conditional dependencies and supplements and stuff like that to, uh, say, only install these packages if uh, graphical libraries and the graphical environments is already installed on the system. Uh, again, it's not always what one may want, but it's probably the least, uh, least bad uh, solution, uh, stuff like that. So, in, uh, there is in the works, in the upcoming QEMU 8 package for Tumbleweed, it's already there, even in previous version, but it doesn't work yet very well. This meta package, which is basically a package, it's called Quemo Headless, and that has no files but only dependencies. And, and it's where I was trying to get this mix between requires and recommends uh, right. Yeah, it, that's what I wanted to see. Probably I should say, I should say better. That's at least better. I, I, I hope that I did. And, uh, and yeah, and uh, for example, I mean, this at least. Maybe at least some of you can read it, so I take it as a, a sign that it's improving already. But again, it's, um, it's challenging to really uh, come up with what's, what's good and what's best in uh, the various uh, scenarios and configuration. So that's what we are doing at the QEMU level. And uh, as I said, uh, this is a way of doing it. Uh, there are... Uh, you can instead um, try to achieve the same uh, manipulating and changing what the patterns requires and recommends. You can use both approaches. 
uh, actually, yeah, combining them, like you have the meta package and, uh, and uh, you uh, refer, refer to it in patterns. But yeah, uh, this is, as I, as I was trying to say, something we are uh, trying to look at and understand what, what could be best and uh, uh, work on it and get to a better solution. So this is basically what I wanted to say for QEMU. Uh, I hand over to uh, the other guys for their part, uh, mostly because, yeah, it's a short talk, but the purpose of it was to present you what we are working on in order to improve the situation, but also if there's interest for that, uh, being able to uh, hear some, some feedback and uh, whatever uh, you think you would like to say about, about that, about how it is, about how it could be, about what we can do to, to make things better. And yeah, with that, the gym. Hello. Yeah, there you go. Um, so on the libvert, um, for better or worse, there has been <clears throat> a proliferation of libvert packages over the years, as you can see here. And I don't want to cover all these things, but um, they can be kind of grouped logically, as I've done. And uh, the interesting ones are the meta packages. <clears throat> Maybe there's a better word for these. As Dario mentioned, they're a package with no files, uh, but just dependencies, so patterns, essentially. Um, <clears throat> and for example, the liver daemon QMU package, uh, it has all the dependencies to give you a full-featured QMU plus libvert stack. So you get a daemon to deal with, um, to interact with QMU, um, <clears throat> a daemon for storage and networking and, you know, all the things you come to expect that liver supports. Um, the daemons have as well <coughs> been proliferation of those packages um, due to the decomposition of the monolithic liver D. Uh, we've wanted to decompose that thing into individual daemons for various reasons. Um, <clears throat> and so we have a lot of these now. I'll talk a little bit more about them in an upcoming slide. Uh, storage is also broken out into several sub-packages, um, <clears throat> primarily so that you can pick and choose what you want to install on your system. So, for example, if you only want file system storage pool support, then you only need to install the liver storage daemon driver file system, um, or, or disk, sorry. Um, <clears throat> and you can leave all this other stuff behind. So the idea behind all these packages is pick and choose uh, for your use case. And <clears throat> probably some of you have seen this, went to install something like libvert and see that, wow, I have 120, 123 new packages to install, That's quite a few. Uh, or libvert daemon's interesting, only four. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> liver daemon QMU, again, that's the full featured QMU plus liver uh, stack, 118 packages. And liver daemon driver QMU, that package is um, just a hypervisor specific driver, and it alone brings in 88 new packages. But as we saw from Dario's slide, uh, bulk of those come from QMU itself. So, what about Tumbleweed? Wow. It's worse here, really. Um, but this can be explained by <clears throat> these, these numbers actually are on, in trying to install these packages on top of a basic text-based role that you select when you're installing the server. So in the case of Sleeve 15, or the difference between those roles and Sleeve 15 and Tumbleweed, um, Sleeve 15 already had a bunch of dependencies, like GTK3, uh, Mesa, et cetera, where Tumbleweed didn't. So it kind of accounts for this um, increase in packages between C15 and Tumbleweed. So <clears throat> we have all these packages with all these dependencies. Maybe there's some way that you can install this stuff without you know, requiring all this stuff on your system. Um, and the scenarios to deploy libvirt generally are, you know, there's some examples here. So <clears throat> to install, you know, if you go and install just the libvirt package, which I mentioned in the previous slide is one of the meta packages, um, you're going to get everything. It's probably not the, 
it's actually not the best decision. Maybe only in testing scenarios would you want to install this package. Because uh, say you install <coughs> the libvirt package on your QMU host and we build libvirt for Zen support as well, you've just brought in Zen. So your KVM host is now a Zen host as well. Um, <coughs> you can avoid that by installing the hypervisor specific daemon package. And again, that gives you a full feature driver for that hypervisor. All libvirt subdrivers are included. You would have support for networking, NW filter, storage, <coughs> uh, secrets, uh, PCI pass through, and so on. Um, another option is install just the daemon driver hypervisor. This will give you <coughs> a daemon and code to manage just the hypervisor. You don't get any livered storage. You don't get any networking. But this can be a good option. <coughs> um, it's actually a fine option because you can use, you can still use storage and networking from the host, which is pretty common usage pattern, particularly in SLE. Um, <coughs> the storage driver, yeah, I should mention a little bit here because <coughs> It as well is a, is a meta package, and it has dependency uh, on all of the storage drivers. Um, the uh, daemon hypervisor package also has a dependency on the storage drivers. So if you install that, you get all of those storage drivers I had shown on the previous slide. And often that's not the case. I mean, I've been pinged on <coughs> Slack and IRC and so on. Hey, you know, I don't want liver daemon driver iSCSI on my system. It brings in iSCSI, which has a lot of dependencies as well. <clears throat> well, you can forego that and just install liver daemon driver disk or liver daemon driver RBD, whatever sub package you need <clears throat> that provides the storage solutions you want. You can just install those and forgo installing this thing, which is going to bring in every um, storage driver that was configured at build time for liver. <clears throat> And finally, if you just want a client that can connect to a virtualization host, manage some VMs, then Liver Client um, <clears throat> gives you Versh, the library, and a few other tools <clears throat> that make it easy to have a client installation. So <clears throat> we talked about ways to deploy the packages. There's also, we need to talk about how to then run those. <clears throat> Um, the monolithic daemon, so there's two options, the monolithic daemon or modular. The monolithic daemon, um, it can load and run any stateful drivers that are installed. Uh, it's controlled via liverd.conf, and <clears throat> you just need to enable the sockets and <clears throat> the daemon will be available. It's the default configuration in sleep. Um, Modular daemons, <coughs> there's a daemon per stateful driver, as I mentioned. They all have an individual configuration file, and you would need to enable all the sockets for those to, um, <coughs> to, to have them all available. And this is the default in Tumbleweed, although <coughs> no daemons are enabled in default by tum in Tumbleweed. Uh, you have to go and enable sockets <coughs> individually. And here's some scenarios of <coughs> how you would go about installing and enabling those. Um, <coughs> so you could, a, a QMU only installation, as I mentioned, you could just install liver daemon driver QMU and enable the for QMUD read only and rewrite sockets. <coughs> if you want to add storage and PCI pass through support to your VM on top of that, then install along with the driver QMU, your storage driver, and node dev driver. <clears throat> and then you would have to enable those sockets as well. And if you want a setup, a, mo a modular daemon setup that is similar to the monolithic daemon, then you could install the daemon QMU package, <clears throat> which again brings in um, a full featured QMU plus liver stack. And we need to go and enable all of the sockets for <clears throat> those, um, for those demons. 
And I don't have much to say about the patterns because Dario already <coughs> covered those pretty well. But one thing I'd want to note is <coughs> the link to where the patterns exist. Um, I've had to tweak those before and <coughs> just use a standard build service workflow of you know branch to package, make some tweaks, and uh, send a submit request. Um, <coughs> and the other kind of interesting thing about the patterns is there you can think of them as serving two. You know, they almost have two options with the no recommends and recommends. Um, and Stario said the server pattern with a no recommends ends up being <coughs> somewhat useless, I think. I mean, it's QMU only. You might as well just install QMU directly. Um, but with recommends, you then get some remote management with Libvirt. And the tools patterns kind of the same. You know, there's requires and uh, then recommends and <clears throat> we'll have to think really about some of the list of things in here and we certainly um, welcome feedback on these patterns and any improvements we can make to them. All right, I should pass this off to Caleb. We're running out of time. There you go. All right, our uh, next deployment scenario is KVM container. This is originating from everybody's favorite project uh, being ALP. Uh, but the goal is, is to make this work not only on ALP, but uh, basically anywhere and any distribution that has uh, system D and Podman uh, enablement. Um, so it's basically taking the same packages uh, that has already been discussed, you know, with the QMU Livert stack uh, on x86, and the goal is to uh, deploy that in a containerized environment uh, for immutable OSs, uh, as I said, for ALP, for micro OS, but it could also be used uh, for non-immutable OSs as well. Um, the goal here is to actually be a one-size-fits-most solution. Uh, we don't have to worry about, well, we could worry about making it smaller and smaller, and that is a goal, uh, but we also have to worry about the fact that um, it, it's, a, it's a Docker file at the end of the day, so you don't want to have to maintain five different Docker files for uh, different uh, versions uh, you know, a, a headless version, a, a GUI version, et cetera, et cetera. You want to try and cover all the bases uh, in one Docker file and have it work for most people. Um, another thing that it uh, currently has is the modular libvert daemons by default. Uh, we don't have the monolithic uh, libvert D at all, uh, and it's disabled when installed. Uh, and the um, modular daemons are enabled and start it by default. Um, another thing to note uh, is that the container currently is rootful and privileged, so it's effectively the same as if you were running, uh, you know, the, the libvirt daemons on your uh, bare metal host uh, as root, uh, and it's basically re replacing the, you know, QMU system URI um, as the uh, control plane on the host machine. Um, but the goal here, uh, maintaining one Docker file and having the you know, one size fits most solution uh, is ease of deployment. We don't have to worry about any of the packages. We don't ever have to touch RPM specifically. Uh, we're just inter uh, interacting directly with Podman. Uh, so with two Podman commands, we're both installing and enabling um, the virtualization stack in the container. Um, Another important thing uh, is everything is managed by systemd. So we have a, a, a meta systemd service that basically uh, handles the container lifecycle, uh, bringing it up, bringing it down, uh, making sure it's restarted if it, uh, if it fails. Um, and all of that's handled inside uh, an enable script at installation time. So um, you can interact with that, of course, uh, you know, post-installation, but the, the goal is that it should just work, and it should be enabled by default uh, to, to work on the next reboot, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the goal here for, for ALP uh, is that this initial deployment and upgrades can be done without rebooting the host uh, system. Of course, on an immutable and read-only uh, root file system, uh, we can't just you know, readily uh, install packages onto the host file system, uh, on the root file system, and uh, actually have them uh, work right right then, you know, we have to actually do a, a force reboot uh, to actually have those um, 
packages then copy over to the current snapshot, or the new snapshot into the new uh, host image. So here's uh, kind of the deployment. Um, like I said, it, it's two Podman calls, uh, both run label commands, uh, one for installing and one for service enable, which will bring in uh, all, all of the dependencies inside the container, install the container itself, and then the service enable will, um, at that point, just uh, deploy all of the liver demons uh, inside the container. Um, and all the interaction is done through systemd, through systemctl, uh, so there's no, there's no special hoops you have to jump through uh, to get this working. And um, its de its goal is also to be deployed transparently on the host. Uh, so it's, uh, I, the thing I wanted to avoid the most was kind of this confusion of, okay, it's in the container. How do I actually administer it? How do I access the config files? How do I ensure it's running? Um, and all of that is actually exposed on the host. So all the liver configuration files are the exact same as if you uh, installed at bare metal. Uh, as, you know, Jem said earlier, you know, libvirt, vertqmud.conf. Uh, right now we're only supporting the QMUD backend for the, you know, liver drivers. Uh, it's going to stay that way probably. Um, but then uh, any of the other configuration files should work uh, out of the box. Uh, the sockets are, well, with the modular liver demons, the sockets are actually configured uh, inside the systemd socket files. Um, so it's a little bit different. It's not uh, in the liverd conf anymore. Uh, it's, it's moved, but it, it still functions the same as if it were installed bare metal. Um, as I said, this, uh, this installation becomes the, the QMU system URI. Uh, so it should be completely transparent. It should, you know, function as if uh, it, will, it, were, it was installed bare metal. And uh, the other, I guess, interesting points um, is that the, since systemd manages uh, both the services and the sockets, the sockets are actually uh, exported on the host. Uh, so accessing the, the, the stack from a, from a third host or you know, an external host uh, is really as simple as just having access to the actual host system. Uh, and then the container is completely transparent at that point. Um, so as long as you have access to the host's, uh, you know, livert sockets, you're, you're golden. Everything should work uh, as you expect it to. Um, and yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I give it back to Jim to wrap up. Uh, no. It's just open for question, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the only comment I have is we certainly would like some feedback on this. I mean, if people are, yeah, if people are uh, having some suggestions or comments or ways we can improve this or, you know, make life easier so that you're not having this dependency hell of, you know, 200 packages being installed when you want, you know, just some basic functionality, we'd be, you know, we'd love to hear that feedback. And it doesn't have to be now. You can send us mail or whatever, so. Just that it seems to me still very complicated. Okay. Sorry. Uh, that it seems that it is still very complicated that the, my use case, which is to run a virtual machine without any iSCSI uh, drivers, uh, with a KVM only, uh, to run Microsoft Windows or something, it still seems to be too complicated. I would love to have like one package to install and th that would make this like minimal set. Yeah, so there is the one package that you can install. It would be... <clears throat> um, well, let's go to here. It would be this package liver daemon driver QMU. That would give you a driver, it gives you vert QMUD, which interacts with QMU only. You get no storage, no networking, 
just ability to manage your VMs. That's probably what you want. Yeah, but could it be called something better than the word the demon driver KMU? Sure. <laughs> Maybe we can wrap that in a pattern. Um, so these are upstream names, by the way. Um, I, our spec file and packaging follows the upstream um, packaging. So these names come from upstream. I could change them, but yeah. Yeah, so I don't know, we certainly could. And like as James was saying, we make a pattern or a meta package, we call it libvirt basic and uh, that's it. But the point, at least in my experience, when you start doing things like that, uh, is that, okay, then this libvirt basic thing is exactly what I want because I want to do basic stuff. But then basic means different things to different people. And so <laughs> it will work for you now, we learned. But uh, someone else say, hey, what I want to do is basic, it doesn't work because it meant, it meant something different with basic. So that's actually the, the, the challenge. If it already works, either you install everything and it works, or you know what you pick and it works. The problem is try to abstract the, 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 the concept and the idea and come up with something that uh, is both general and uh, yeah, common enough. And uh, about the, uh, I saw in the slides that we have to sometime uh, enable the socket manually. Uh, is it something that can be done probably in an automatic fashion, maybe? Yeah, so in Tumbleweed, uh, we won't. I mean, there's, uh, for the longest time, we've just not enabled anything on Tumbleweed for security reasons. I don't know if that's still the case. I mean, long ago, I actually got a bug in the bird for enabling libvirt D out of the box on Tumbleweed. So I've disabled that, and it's been that way for years now. Um, <clears throat> in Slee, we have the presets package where we can, and in fact, in, in Slee, when you, uh, part of that uh, presets package is in enabling the libvirt D socket. Um, if we, so in Slee, you have this enabled already. Um, with the modular daemons and the slide that has the for loops going through and enabling all those things. Um, these also can be added to the presets. If we decide in SLE to move to the modular setup, I would have the presets change to enable all these things by default, so you wouldn't need to do that. Yeah, but how is the tumbleweed user supposed to figure figure out this command line down there? I mean, uh, that's crazy. I mean, you, you, you would certainly do it wrong, basically, right? Yeah. I don't um, know if you heard the, the user interface talk yesterday. Yeah. So this is this is totally crazy. I mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have this documented. <laughs> um, yeah. Beyond that, um, you're right. Um, I, I need to think about it, right? In Slee, we have a solution for this. And I, I, actually, it's a good point. I mean, do we have preset, that's preset notion in Tumbleweed? Because I could investigate the possibility of enabling these demons again in Tumbleweed, right? We could have the presets, and then this is done for you. A lot, one other point, though, just quick before I, is um, some of these sockets have requires on the others, right? So um, you don't have to be starting all this stuff. Um, these ones, though, all the secondary drivers don't because you know, in case you don't want those, we don't want to have a requires on, you know, some socket requires another in starting it when you really don't want that functionality. So I want to avoid that as well. It, it, it's tough. Yeah, but then it also probably means that somebody might start into, uh, enabling just one or two of these sockets and basic virtual machines work, and then the person installs or tries another virtual machine that uses whatever PCI pass tools on, and suddenly that virtual machine doesn't work, and then he goes, oh, what, what did I miss here, right? Right. And that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, 
Generally, I would hope that you would use something more like the liver Damon driver package, right? Or the, the liver Damon QMU package. You get all of the supporting stuff with that. If we had presets in Tumbleweed, I would have all those enabled and pretty much that could solve this problem. But when you get to the point where you say, I don't want all that baggage and you just want stuff like the second item here or the first item, you're kind of on your own with documentation to help. I think one thing that might be very important in this context is uh, meaningful error messages so that the, the user can actually figure out that she needs to uh, enable the node dev socket, for example, if something doesn't, doesn't work. So without doing S trace and, and trying to figure out what the demon is trying to do and, and this kind of thing that you usually do. Yeah. Okay. Understood. No, and I guess we are out of time. What I just wanted to say is that I think we do have presets in Tumbleweed. The point is, can we enable stuff by default? Because I, I, I'm not sure, but by policy and stuff that you said that you had a bug for. Probably, probably there's someone that can answer this question, in, in, if not here, in the conference. But I'm not sure we can. So given all these uh, package choices, could you give us a bit of a hint how you've solved that for the containers? And follow-up question, um, what is the relation between the KVM containers that you've talked about here and then the KubeVert harvester containers and the like? Thanks. Yeah, so as I said, the, the problem is mainly solved by assuming QMU, uh, assuming modular liver demons, assuming you're going to get everything you need for it to work in almost all cases. Um, so, of course, making sure you're not installing something that's definitely unnecessary, but being pretty liberal with what's inside the Docker file and what actually ends up in the container, because you're not going to see it unless you go and look at the Docker file or inspect your, your uh, container image. Um, in which case, you know, we can, we can address that there. Uh, how many containers would we actually then have running in that case? You, you would only like, have one container in the KVM yeah. container case. Okay, so not one per, per daemon? No. Okay. All, all the daemons are inside the, the one container. Okay. Um, the Kubert case, uh, there's multiple can containers there, but their main use case is to basically uh, enable interaction with Kubernetes, uh, which is a totally you know separate domain. All right, I think we're good. Yep. <laughs>